Hey, welcome to Leaving Crazy Town with Finn and Sarah. Sarah, what kind of fabulous topic do you have for us today? <laughs> All right, so what we're going to talk no. about is this. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, part no. of setting, part of healing from codependency is setting boundaries. We talk about this a lot, but we're going to give specific examples that come up in people's lives all the time. So someone was giving me the example the other day, and I hear this in my groups all the time, which is, geez, my parents on the phone and I either don't want to talk to them. I don't want to talk to them now. I don't want to talk to them as ever. much as they, yeah, ever. I don't want to talk to them as frequently as they might want to talk to them. And if I do say what I want or need, they will get upset or they'll tune me out and, and just shut down and be quiet on the phone. So we're going to give some examples of some options rather than, you know, not speaking up. Because like we've talked about, speaking up, saying what you need, what you think, what you want is the quintessential component to healing from codependency so let me just start with this all right go ahead anytime you change and you set boundaries or you change your behavior yes expect to feel uncomfortable yes i think a problem with a lot of people is we go through these things and we say you know like here's a suggestion and yes. then we hear from people and they say well i was so uncomfortable I was so fearful. Right. It was awful. It is. It's going Shit, to be. Right. But like anything, it gets easier. And when you're other on the other side, you're so empowered and you're not controlled by your past. And you will be amazed at how the people around you change with you. Oh my gosh. That's the other thing. Hopefully. <laughs> All right. That's the other thing. I've given examples before about my dad and how my dad would call me up and during college years, I don't know if I told the story on here about, he would financially support me during the college years. He paid for my apartment. And one day he wanted to have dinner with me and I said, no. And he literally said, do you want your check? And thank God I had some codependency recovery by then because what I said is, dad, I always do the Columbo. Are you saying that if I don't have dinner with you, you're not gonna send me my check? And then he just started laughing. So my point is, when we start to speak up and we change, people in our lives change. And what she means by the Columbo is asking the question. Like she asking, asks like an investigator. An investigator. As opposed to just accepting what was said. Yes. All right. So I was going to ask you guys a few questions. And we're going to do gonna an answer exercise. we're going to answer them. We're going to do an exercise and then we'll give some tips and tools. All right. See you right. right. So what we're trying to do is look at, this is the thing to remember, you guys. <sighs> You're not five, you're not three, you're not seven, you're not nine. But I'm very fragile. Yeah, you're a 45, 40, 35. 50s. You're, you're an adult now. So here you're talking to your say 67 year old parent and you get on the phone and it's like you're five years old. When they're just an adult, you're an adult. You can literally speak like an adult. So we're I just gonna want to do say some adulting. We're gonna do some adulting. All right. In my growing up years, write this question down. How many years ago was that? No, I'm just what, kidding. <laughs> what did saying no mean? Oh boy. Finn? Oh, I wasn't able to say no. <laughs> Period at the end. No, we didn't say no. So that's just it. Like if somebody somebody asked me, like my parents asked me to do something? No options. No, you get beat. You get beat. Okay. You don't say no. <laughs> you just, you learn very quickly that you do whatever they want or you, your ass is grass. Okay. So Finn's experience of saying, of so think about that. All those experiences are in his body. So no wonder, so there's a lot to learn when we become adults. Oh my God. When I'm going to say no to someone, I might get I mean, scared, I grew up in a violent, but, drunk home. You had to yes. monitor everyone's feelings and make sure you were safe by making sure everyone else was happy. All right, so let's look at the transition. Today, saying no means what? Freedom. Freedom. <laughs> well, um, but it's not about... It. Okay, so basically before, I never said no because I was monitoring everyone to make sure I could stay safe. Today, I'm safe. When I say no, it's because the answer is no for me. It's not about the other person at all. And that's the difference, right? Before I could only say yes 
um, and I, could, I couldn't say no, and I was always basing my decision on what the other people were doing. Today, I get to look at the situation and say, Finn, do you want to do this? Do you not want to do that? Yes, perfect. That's it. I don't worry about them. Perfect. They may have their feelings, and people do. Or um, sometimes I'll say no, and they'll change the activity, and then change the time, and change the date. And I'm like, <laughs> the answer's still going to be no. You right. don't need to adjust yourself to my answer. Yes. I, it's not something I want to do. Perfect. So, so the thing with saying no is this, and I'm going to give another example. Saying no, the trouble is, or the challenge is, then we have to tolerate what's happening inside our bodies when we're noticing what's happening for the other person. I will say when I first started saying no, yes, those feelings of being abused used to churn around inside. Like I, I was anxious when I yes, first started anxious. saying no. Because some people feel guilty, right? And I just was, I was nervous, like, oh, they're not gonna like me, they're gonna be mad at me. I, when I started saying no, yes, it's, I still had all those feelings as if Absolutely. I was a kid, but I eventually they dissipate, and now I just freely toss my nose around. <laughs> but that's the thing to remember so the feelings of anxiety, the fear, okay, that's gonna pop up, the fear that, oh my god, they're gonna get mad at me, and then I say, I say to my clients. Okay, well then what do we do? Like, it's not over then. Like, first of all, people shouldn't be screaming and yelling at you, but we'll deal with that situation later. Um, so the options, so feelings are gonna come up. We're gonna have some fear. I just wanted to give an example from my family. If I, my father, oh my God, he was such a control freak, you guys. If he said to me on a Saturday morning, do you wanna go to breakfast? Take me to this place down in, in the town where we go to breakfast, I'd say, okay, I'm going to breakfast, but that's it, right? So I would actually literally set a limit. And you know what happened? You'd you ride guys? in his car and then you're hostage? Yeah, so I'm 10 years old. I go to breakfast with dad. And for the next three hours after breakfast, we're driving around wherever the hell he wants to go. Because you know what? My dad was lonely and he wanted company. And I would be a prisoner in that car. So I have like that today. I have some stuff with that. Guess who takes her own car everywhere? Yeah, hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, so anyways, we're talking about things that are going to happen when you say no. So one of them, like we're saying, is we're worried someone's going to get mad at us. All right. So the other thing, the other question we're going to ask you is what happened when you would just speak up when you were a kid? didn't speak up. Oh my God. All right. And I couldn't. All right. Like, you could. So no I, speaking up. If I tried. Oh, I know. I'll give you an example. Give me an I spoke example. up. I was sitting in a chair watching a TV show and my stepfather came around the corner oh. and he asked me what I was doing. And I said, I'm watching TV. And he said, why aren't you doing your homework? And I said, because I don't have any. And he picked me up by my hair and threw me across the room. Okay. So I spoke up. So what's the message there? You think? Don't talk. Don't talk. Right. And I'm sure lots of you guys watching this could not speak up. In fact, I have another list. We'll do another episode of symptoms of growing up in an alcoholic home. And there's this famous saying, you don't speak, you don't see, you don't hear. Right. That's an alcoholic home. So if that's what your experience is, there's a lot to learn. So what are some things we can do now if having our voice is the most important thing and learning to speak up and express our needs is the most important thing, what are a couple of tools? Uh, doing it. Uh, yes, practicing. Number one, practicing. But I know when I first started speaking up, it didn't always come out nice. First yes. we learned to say what we need to say and then we learned to say it nicely. Yes. Um, so practicing, but I ask for help. I try to get centered and then I just, I literally, I know this is going to sound ridiculous people, but I used to say one, two, three spoonful of sugar in my head and then just out with it. Yes. And it would come out obviously like I had some sort of brain injury, but, uh, I was started to say it. And also I practiced more and more with people I knew I was safe with. Yes. Very so good. even though as an adult, I'm not in unsafe situations, most of the time, like 99, nine. 9% right. of the time, but I still know, like I would practice and sometimes I would practice, say I had to say something to my father. I might practice with my wife yes. saying the words really, great. and then even can get that person you're practicing with to give you a little resistance. Yes. And then 
The other thing I used all the time, Sarah, was having key phrases, knowing how they're going to respond. Yes. Have a key phrase available and ready. Perfect. So when I'm getting anxious, I just have the phrase. It's yes. been practiced. It just comes out. It's neutral, but it gets the point across. Yes. I actually just said this to someone the other day. If, you're use, if you and your mom or your dad have been in this game for years and years and years where you say something, they say something, and then you shut up, or however the dynamic is, have a little three by five card next to the phone or on the table in front of you with just one sentence. Jeez, it seems like you're not sharing now, mom. Okay, we can get off the phone. Seems like you're upset now. We can get off the phone. Whatever it is, just keep repeating. You know, I often say my brother, the attorney, just says, keep repeating the same sentence over and over. I, I had to get off the phone with my mom once and she was screaming at me. And yes. I, I counted to three. I said, Mom, we could say goodbye nicely. Yes. Or I'm going to hang up on the count of three. Perfect. Do you want to say goodbye? And then I said one. And then I went through the whole thing. And I literally had a stomach ache all yes. night. And, of course, the next day she didn't even remember the conversation. But Perfect. I just want to give a flip side of what it feels like to have people say no to me and to speak up. Okay. It feels great. Yes. Because I know that they trust me. I have developed a core group of friends who we've learned and we walk through the fear. We've talked about, oh, I'm fearful. I'm, I'm sorry. I have to do this thing or I can't do that. Like we've created a safe environment for each other to honor our nose and honor our speaking up. And yes. that is super important. And it makes it easier to do it with others. And I want to bring it back to codependency. The most important thing about healing from codependency is being who you really are, which means saying what you feel and think, expressing your feelings. If someone hurts you, you can express it to if someone's appropriate to express it to and doing what you want to do rather than doing what other people want all the time. And doing my writing, I saw that, that I was a liar. And a lot of my lying came through with not speaking up and saying the truth because those yes. people didn't get the true me. Yeah, so people say, oh, I have these great relationships in my life. I've heard this with clients for years. Oh, my family gets along great. But literally nobody tells the truth and nobody tells what they're really thinking. So to and me... And they say they're doing it for other people because they don't want them to be upset when the truth is it's your fear that's stopping you. Absolutely. So the last thing I'm going to say is this, is like Finn was saying about the three, two, one, I think it's critical to have a vision, have this image of like either Wonder Woman or whomever, for me. Spider-Man. Wh wh whomever, Spider-Man. When you're getting on a call with someone or you're about to set a limo with someone, have an image for yourself of how it's going to feel ultimately. And then you could even have an image of them. Oftentimes what helps is seeing your parents as little kids. I, I was going to say crazy. not Darth Vader. No, but <laughs> seeing them as just little helpless children because they're just as afraid as anyone else. All We're right. all just bumbling our way through. We're bumbling our way through. Not on Bumble right now, thank God. All right, that's for another episode. We're leaving crazy town. We're out of here. Your seatbelt.